Houston. We are go for launch in T-minus 30 seconds. Every day I become a better operator. Whatever it is, and it happens. Why? Because I don't take time off. We are green on all engines, sir. I only knew one way, and I knew the right way. Initiating launch countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boost the ignition. The Service Rocket Podcast has good liftoff. Welcome to the Service Rocket Podcast, hosted by Victor, the Rocket Man Rancor. Please enjoy the ride. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Service Rocket Podcast, episode number four. Uh, this one I'm extremely excited about. I have Mr. Home Service Millionaire, soon to be billionaire, Mr. Tom, Tommy Mello on the podcast. Welcome, Tommy. Hey, Victor. Thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, man, I'm excited to have you on and excited to talk. I mean, between between you and me, I, I can't keep up with what either of us are doing, but it always seems like there's always something bigger and better. And and just every time I talk to you, man, I feel like I walk away just a little bit smarter and feel a little bit dumber, to be honest, because I, I'm trying to keep up with you all the time, man. So uh, you want to introduce yourself to some of the people that might not know who you are, and then uh, we'll kind of jump in it from there. Yeah, my name's Tommy Mello. I own a company called A1 Garage Door Service. Live in Arizona from Michigan. Um in Michigan, I was born in 83. I moved to Arizona in 1999, so when I was 16. And the only thing you know in Michigan is how to mow lawns and shovel snow. So I've been in home service since I was nine. Um, and then, you know, I came to Arizona, uh, bartended a little bit, bus tables, did all that, and started another landscape company. Got into the garage industry in 2007 and didn't have anything. You know, I was the guy in the truck. I was broke. Sometimes I, I had to work a double shift as a busboy or bartender just to pay rent to be able to run in the garage industry. 2010, I had a partner. We went separate directions. But um, if there's a mistake that's been done in the home service spot space, it's it's been me. Um, I've fallen more and more than anybody could ever know. I've owned the IRS $30,000 for one city in taxes. I've had people lie, cheat, and steal. I've had my mom and stepdad work for me. I've... You name it. I've had a trucks burn up in the fires. I've had flip trucks. If it could happen, it was like Murphy's Law for me. But the good thing is I try not to make the same mistake twice. And um, I wrote the book, The Home Service Millionaire. I had 12 co-authors, a lot of the people I learned from. It's a really nice Rolodex. And then in, as far as the um, the podcast, I've been podcasting for a while. Last last month, we broke 40,000. We got about 44,000 downloads. And really, I have something to share. And the secret sauce, Victor, that you'll soon find out is the podcast is actually consulting for me. I get to ask the questions of what's going on in my business. And I get a lot of great answers and I get anybody I want on the podcast. I had um, Michael Gerber with the E-Myth. He came into my shop and, you know, it's just fun because I have a really good time and I enjoy myself and this home service business has provided me an opportunity to do stuff that I never thought possible and help a lot of people. And I really enjoy it. So that that's my story. Yeah, man. And, and I think the one cool thing about you, Tommy is, you know, obviously you're in garage doors, but I feel like your story resonates with the entire industry, you know, home service industry. And I feel you like you've done a really good job as far as, you know, kind of bringing and merging those industries together and, and communicating and showing each other like a lot of the stuff is very similar. And I, you know, I know that we talk about it all the time. You know, us HVAC guys don't want Tommy Mello in our market, right? We don't want you coming into HVAC. We want you to stay over there with your garage doors all day. Uh, but I think that's been one of the things is like even even when I was starting out, like I still remember seeing the Tommy Tommy Mello Home Service Millionaire ads on social media and kind of wondering who you were and then kind of reading, obviously reading through your book and, and reading through and kind of really kind of getting to know, getting to know you, talking to you over the last couple of years has been pretty interesting. But it, it's crazy. Like what? Obviously, you go from a technician in your truck, broke as shit. And this is, you know, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, whatever it is. And now fast forward to where you are now to where you're having high level business talk. You're not talking and fixing things in your truck. You're talking about multiple locations nationwide, 500 fucking employees. Like, how does that happen? Because I feel like everybody that has this opinion of, of maybe me or you or these other guys, they think it was fucking spoon fed to us. And we showed up one day and we had 500 employees where, no, you started the same spot as everybody else. You failed probably just as much or probably way more than anybody else. Yeah, here you are. So you want to kind of explain what, you know, what drove you to kind of get to here? 
You know, it was 2017. I w- was able to convince Aura very difficultly, by the way, to get – he opened up Service Titan for garage doors, for us. And he sent out tech, 10 success managers to Phoenix. So, first of all, that was my fifth CRM. Secondly, I met a guy named Dan Antonelli. He helped me figure out the wraps. I met a guy named Al Levy. He taught me about manuals and how to build technicians. I, the people I've met, I've just simply said I'm a big fan of yours. I'll do anything you ask. I kept my mouth shut. I took notes. The difference is I implemented it. And um, I was able to find an integrator in 2014, my right hand. Um, My stepdad was my right hand, and then Adam came on, and he really filled in on some of the gaps. And it's just, you know, I think the biggest thing is I'm a student for life. I read a lot of books. I go visit a lot of shops. I mean, I had Tom Howard and Ken Goodrich in here on Friday uh, for a couple hours, and I talked to Ellen Rohr over the weekend. And I'm just, look, HVAC paved the way for me. And Julian texted me the other day, you're on my mind, brother. I miss you. And I'm like, dude, you mean the world to me. And Julian, you know, with Next Star, it's the world becomes smaller the more I listen and the more I just tell people how much I appreciate them and what they meant to me and my family. So I, I think you're right. It, it didn't come easy, but, you know, I've always enjoyed my life and what I do. I never walked in. I, I guess 10 years ago, there were days that I'd walk in and be like, why is this person? There's eight people smoking cigarettes and there's two people working the phones. You know, it just gets frustrating. And then COVID happened and I had a line outside of my door of people giving me all their PTO for other employees. They said, I'll take a demotion because I need this company to survive. You guys have meant more to our family. So COVID for me was more of a spot to reflect. I'm an ADD, as you can tell, ADHD. So for me to slow down and look backward, that's what COVID did for me and just really figured out that I'm blessed. And you look at like Aaron Gaynor comes out of here. He's, he hangs out with me and he doesn't need to do that. And I, I've got, I've just, the Rolodex service Titan did a lot for me. Al Levy did a lot for me. The introductions have been crazy. And um, yeah, that that's really it is just listening and always wanted to do better. One of my core values is always improving. And number, number two is aspire to be number one. So people say, who's your competitor? I go, Elon Musk. That's the only one I care about. I'm like, he's number one. Why would I chase after home service is one thing, but who do I look up to? Why would I look at, I look up to everybody in the home service space, but why not look at the best and mimic what he's doing and figure out, follow him. So that's, uh, it's been a lot of trials, but overall I would change some things tactically, but overall I made all these mistakes for a reason. So one thing that I, you know, obviously I, I hear a lot of what you're saying in that, but one of the things that really stood out to me, because, you know, being a fellow ADHD person that that could barely sit still for the life of me, you said you went and got an integrator, right? So you got someone that's going to, you know, I feel like you're like, you got the big ideas, just kind of similar to me, right? But having someone that has an integrator, how important has that been? Someone that you could say, hey, look, I want to do this. And they actually go make that happen for you. Um, when did you kind of realize that that was an important position and, and you know, how, how have you been able to, how do you think that's helped your success, uh, since that happened? Well, to understand the difference between a visionary and an integrator was half the battle. Right. And I didn't know Adam was an integrator when I met him. Um, but now I do. And I read the book rocket fuel. And what I realized was Walt Disney, as amazing as he was, wouldn't be able to do anything without his brother, Roy. Roy knew what was in the bank account at all times. He knew how to make payroll. You know, Walt was a dreamer. He knew what Disneyland was going to look like before there was a brick or, or a paved street. You know, he figured it out, but he needed people to help him. And part of that goes into the Eisenhower matrix of what should I be working on today? What should I be delegating? And how do I prioritize? And to really figure out. I mean, look, if you looked at my project board on Monday, which is a project management tool, there's about 170 projects, but a lot of them are delegated. A lot of them are outsourced. We're taking the whole site in Spanish. We're hiring for the Spanish call center. We're going to do a lot of things. We've got a pay-per-click campaigns built. We're we're, uh, optimizing our GMBs and LSAs for Spanish. I mean, these are things that take years for people. It's been one month we've been working on. It'll be launched next month. So I would say... The integrator is the most crucial role for a visionary. And then to surround yourself with multiple integrators, it just adds fuel to the fire. And now you can grow 
very, very fast. Remember, Elon Musk only has the same amount of hours as you have and I have in our day. So yeah. to realize to have a plan, have an organized, you know, if, if you were to look, I don't even want to show you, but if you look at my calendars, they're all there. Uh, sometimes I tell Bree, my executive assistant, that I need time to go to the bathroom. But they're like, put in a little time for lunch in the bathroom breaks because it's all organized, though. Everything's got a time and a place. Even to get this meeting between us, it was like moving stuff around and figuring it out. But it's all important stuff. So, yeah. that's well, I mean, obviously, it's important. You guys got to you got to be able to delegate, especially if you want to work at a high level. So, obviously, it sounds like you have you delegate more than you probably actually have to physically do yourself most of the time, right? Because so I think a lot of guys and one of the big mistakes and why people don't grow out of their one man, two man, five man operation is because of delegation. Can you kind of kind of talk about that and like how you've started? How were you able to go from the guy in a truck to be able to start trusting people to go go and do your vision for you? Right? Because I feel like that's a lot of the guys are so scared to trust other people. Well, that's the thing you got to understand. I mean, delegation came by accident. And then Al Levy taught me what I was doing. But if you think about this, I don't open up my own mail. I don't open up my own email. I don't look at payroll. I don't remember the last time. I don't even know how to log in to see payroll. Uh, but I have all kinds of checks and balances, believe it or not. I, I've got I've got an API that's built in that it feeds into a Google Doc to look at things. But ultimately, I know certain things because if you think that um, Jack Welch in the heyday of General Electric was looking at who payroll was going. So how do you build trust it is important. I think you hit the nail on the head when my mom and stepdad moved out for me in 2010 they gave me trust and that's what I needed to grow the business. I didn't have to deal with these mundane things like, and it sounds crazy. Inventory and payroll are very important, but I'm marketing and sales. I'm growth. I'm the machine that hits the gas. But if yeah. I leave for two months, we don't skip a beat, but I'll tell you this, the goals will be dropped down to here and we'll continue to grow. They say 10% growth is safe. I say 150% is what my goal is. We've got, we've got, Good, better, best goals. Then we've got Tommy goals, and they call them Tommy goals because they're really they're, they're kind of fictional. <laughs> Probably really so I got to I got to define to these guys how do we get there? And I said, hey, here's what we're going to do: a billion in five years. And they laughed at me. Then I wrote down on a whiteboard a billion. I wrote down a line that created five segments. I said, here's where we're at today. How many technicians do we need? If our average guy does five hundred thousand, we need one two thousand technicians. How many do we need to recruit this year, next year, the year after on a growth on a hockey stick growth? Then we felt it, we plotted it all. And then they walked out of my office. And they go, holy shit, we could do this. So it wasn't just, a, I want to do a billion. It was, here's how we're going to get to a billion. And here's how we're going to surpass a billion. I told yeah. somebody the other day, the goal is 2 billion because here's the problem. Victor, if you told me to do 60 pushups right now, and you were like, I'll give you a thousand bucks. I would figure out a way in my head at 57, I would be struggling, but I'd get those last three. I'd be shaking, probably not the best form. But if you told me to do 30 at 26, I'd be like the same thing because the yeah, brain yeah. has a crazy way of doing that. When you're at the gym, if the trainer says 15, if he says 10, I'll do, I'll struggle at nine. So I'd like to set a goal to blow through that goal. If I want to do a billion, I got to tell them 1.52 billion, right? And show them how to get there. That way, if we, if we fall on our face, we still hit my real goal. <laughs> so like you were telling me, you were talking to me before, like you have, obviously you have your today goals, future goals, stuff like that on as far as like as your ideas come through so a lot of entrepreneurs we have great ideas right and then fucking 10 minutes later we're like cats cats looking at a fucking following a light around right we always forget them how do you go about organizing those ideas and if you are writing them down do you prior prioritize them as you write them down or is it how do you guys how do you go about that because obviously as someone that's add like myself i come up with ideas and sometimes like fucking 10 minutes later i forget the damn thing and i'm like why didn't why didn't i just document that so how do you go about that so i've got a guy now I consider him my personal COO. He was a CEO of a $25 million company. And he says I kidnapped him. I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. <laughs> and I said, hey, every time I text message you, I'm going to text in a certain way. And I needed to hit the Monday board. And then I want to work with you on how to, this guy, could. he works seven days a week. He's got a family. He spends quality time with them, but he enjoys working with me. I'm like the, yin, it's a yin and yang situation. It's great. And it, he's in Pittsburgh, so if I call him at 8, 8, 8 p.m., he's at 11 p.m., he'll answer and he'll talk. And he's up way earlier than me. So he's a freaking machine. So what I've learned is I'm only as powerful as the weapons, the, the bullets in my gun. 
So yep. when I started to realize, I don't, I, Tony Robbins said it the best. You're not going to learn. I'm going to hire the people that could take me further. They're going to be smarter than me. I never hire somebody and say, I'll always be the boss of you. There's a book called Built to Last or, or yeah, Built to Last. And it's like, get the people around you to give you freedom. Get people that are smarter than you. I never have to be like, tell me what, there was 20 meetings going on more important than some of the stuff that I had going on. I wasn't part of any of them. And I'm not like, I need those reports on my desk. Ha, blah, 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 blah. So many people are control freaks. And then other people, they get a shiny light. Oh my God, I'm going to be a real estate investor. I'm going to invest in a bar. I just, that my buddy just told me he's got a new vape pen and I'm going to invest in that. Why don't we focus on the shit that's making us a ton of money? You said it yourself. You said you took your eye off the ball. You refocus now that you're having a best year ever with a record EBITDA. So I, I think that's the biggest thing, right? Like it's, you know, a lot of guys, instead of putting in the work and doing the things that are necessary to fix what they're working on now. And, and I've been, I've been one to do it, right? Like instead of fixing what my problem is, I just ignored my problem and go create something else to try to, that it, I'm hoping that's going to fix my problem. So how do like, every time I talk to you, there's never a waiver. There's never a, you know, maybe I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You keep always every time i talk to tommy it's i'm gonna be the fucking biggest garage door company in the united states right i want to be the biggest garage door company i want to be the biggest there's never a like hey i want to take over the fucking world i want to be the best at the one thing right how do how did you come how did you come to realization like i want garage doors and that's what i'm gonna do and how do you stay focused when you probably get offers and, and ideas and people are trying to bring you into all these other directions what do you do to help yourself stay laser focused on what your mission is well I don't care what you put in front of me. I got like right now we flipped four houses in the last 60 days, but I'm not involved with any one of them. It was my money at work making money. I don't, I knew that I didn't want to be involved, but I know that also I have good cash flow and I, I can't deploy it fast enough because in this inflationary time, I want it working for me. But I read the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller, and then I read Essential of Essentialism, and it's by this guy named McGiven. McGiven, yeah. And Two books that everybody needs to read if they want to learn to focus. And if you if you plot it out, how much if I focus on this one thing and our growth rate, there's no faster way to multiple billions because there's this beautiful thing called arbitrage. And right now it's a crazy time, Victor, because people can't get parts. They can't get trucks. They can't find techs. They don't have my marketing machine. They don't have our training, but they have a great business. And so we get the poor steroids into them and they've had their best year ever, but we're going into a recession, record inflation in 40 years. It could get a lot worse based on what I'm hearing. Um, they're starting to see it. The mortgage brokers are calling me. They laid off everybody. Realtors are telling me they had their worst month ever. But here's the thing that I know is when everybody else is bitching, saying sell, da, 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 that's the time to grow. When everybody's saying, yeah. when you got a stripper in 2008 buying 10 houses, you know it's time to sell. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've always did the opposite of what you're hearing everybody. Oh my God, it's getting really crazy out there. What are we going to do? How are you going to hire? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? I'm like, COVID happened. We doubled down on marketing. We went straight TV because we knew everybody was at home. Yeah. And it's going against it's going against the, the stream. It's, it's running against what everybody else is saying. So you look at a depressed economy, is the time to take market share? Well, I keep, you know, I keep hearing, you know, I'm talking to a bunch of our people that we know to, to each other and everybody's like, oh, I got to sell this year. I got to go to market. I got to go do this. And I'm like, why? I, you know, obviously, you know, a down economy is one thing, but I feel like when, when you're in an essential business, like you're going to, there's still going to be a need there. Right. I feel at this point, it's like one of those things like we're waiting. I'm just waiting for everybody to start dying because everybody else is getting crushed in my, in HVAC, they're getting crushed by, by price increases and all these things going on. They can't get equipment just like they are in, in garage doors. And it's just getting those margins lower and lower. I'm just seeing, and I'm looking at the eye, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel uh, coming into probably November, December, January, all these guys are going to start wanting to sell their business and I'm going to be able to buy them at, on the cheap. So I'm looking the opposite way. I'm like, okay, well, fuck well, it. You, like, you, I know. Well, in a way, but you, you do have a backing. So the bank could only take certain people so far. If you're a platform company, you got to ask yourself, even though we've got I never do the math right. Nine, 10, 11 figures, I guess, in the bank, you know, well over 10 million. The, the fact is, did I do the math right? I think so. Um, you, I cannot finance all these deals. So I need the bank or you got to have an equity partner or a strategic buyer in mind. So 
ultimately I'm in a very weird scenario where I've got a bank that's backing us and it depends on how fast they can move. But for things like me, I mean, it all comes down to how quick can we grow through acquisitions, but I'm also, I'm in 29 markets, 20 States, mostly greenfield, but I'm looking like this. If I overlap my KPIs, my conversion rate, my average ticket, my booking rate, my cost per acquisition. And then I, I do a couple other things. It makes sense for me to build a funnel of companies because I could pay them and make them multimillionaires. And then I could pay them a huge bonus each year to stay on for a few years. And, and it just, it's, it's alignment. So I'm not saying that, it, you know, that there's not partnerships. Every company is different and everything's different. You know that there's some companies that are, are really good at new construction. There's some companies that have been around for 35 years that don't really do believe in Google. So I look at everything and I go, this is my industry. I'm really good at it. But here's what I've learned. As much as I know, as I met all these companies that I've been talking to, they've all got their secret sauce. And it's crazy because all of it works. People go, you can't make money in the yellow book anymore. You can't make money on Valpac. You can. You just got to know yeah, how to do it. Oh, Angie's List sucks. No, it works. People make a living out of that. Some tech sucks. No, it works. I don't believe in doing all of it. I can make money on Craigslist and Groupon. I mean, yeah, I, you can, but people say, oh, that shit doesn't work. And I'm like, just because it didn't work for you, just because Google didn't work for you, just because billboards don't work for you, you got somebody like Service Champions, you know, he doesn't do fancy trucks. Yes. He doesn't do a lot of raps and, and, you know, billboards and stuff like that. He's the best I've ever seen it. And memberships and memberships work yeah. for him. Memberships don't work for everybody. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, obviously I came from the service champions model, right? Like I Leland's where I started working. That's where the only business I really, I took a lot of my stuff from. Right. And, you know, growing, cause like, obviously you see, I got Ishmael in my market. I got these other guys in my market and I see Ishmael goes up and puts 250 billboards up. Right. Which was a great play. That's how he was able to acquire the, the labor, right? He was able to acquire the labor because they saw him driving everywhere. But I go from, you know, listening to, you know, Leland Smith and Leland's like, I would never buy a billboard. I would just spend the money and buy more trucks and more trucks on the road are going to get me more customers anyways. And, you know, my business is primarily service. I don't, I'm mostly looking, we're doing tune-ups most of the day. We're doing tune-ups and flipping those into replacements. And that's where my, my, my business comes from. And then some of the other way, you know, Ishmael was able to create a bunch of fucking replacement, uh, replacement jobs and sell a bunch of replacements fast enough and install them quick enough. His was built off of efficiency. Like that company is efficient. They're, they're selling, installing and collecting like that. Right. Super fast, which is impressive to watch him. So there's a lot of different ways to make money in the industry. You just have to figure out what, what you're the best at. Uh, but I think for me, it's been the membership stuff. So on your, on the garage door side, um, you said, Hey, I'm, very grateful to the HVAC people, right? So what have you taken from the HVAC side and implemented the garage doors that wasn't really there before? I don't know where to start. Service agreements, turnovers. No one ever knew what a turnover was. Financing, that no one did financing. Those are three of the big ones. I'd also say is having a junior tech tech, senior tech, separating installers from technicians, uh, separating CSRs from dispatchers. None of this shit existed. I just went over yeah. a lot. But I, I don't know where to start. I mean, literally, the multiples, how arbitrage works, what the, what an EBITDA even means. You know, all these things happen because some guy started in the early 90s, and it was um, um, Frank, uh, if, you know, what's the name? It was George Brazil. and Yeah, George Brazil, yeah. No. And these different guys got together, and they designed these operations, and it just continued to get better. And I sat down with, with a bunch of garage door companies, 20-some out of them, and I go, how many of you guys, you know, an HVAC unit for a lot of these guys, two grand, they're selling it for 10, 12, 15, 20, 30. <laughs> and I said, so let's just take, you, you take a seven times multiple. And this was back a couple of years ago. I said, let's just say we charge seven times what we pay. What do you pay for a door and an opener? I said, what about 1500? They said, yeah. I said, are you guys charging 10,500? <laughs> they go, oh, they look wow. around. I'm like, put your hands up if you did that. And then I go, 9,000, 8,000, 7,000. And we kept getting lower and lower. And they go, how can you charge that? How do you sleep at night? And I go, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you offer PTO? How about how about anything with the Dave Ramsey program? How many of you drive in not brand new trucks? How many of you guys have a 401k? How many of you guys have really good dental insurance? How many of you guys pay for all the gas? How many of you guys have brand new? How many guys could do billboards? I said, how the fuck do you sleep at night? How do you sleep yeah. at night knowing you're shitting on your employees in the name of taking care of your employees? All right, in the name of taking care of your, 
you chart. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. I got guys that make six figures because guess what? A lot of them, most of them, if you can't make six figures with me, you're not going to go anywhere and make six figures. And I'm like, these guys have dreams. These women, these men, they have dreams. They have goals. They want to spend time with their families. They want to put their kids in private school. They want a new car. They want a rental. Why do we got to hold the industry down? Why can't we do billboards and TV like HVAC guys? Why can't we pay our people really, really well? Because here's the deal. People are leaving the trades like no other. So when we could get them in, now we're, it used to be, you know, 20 years ago, oh, if you can't make it in school, just go into the trades. Now it's like the trades are back, baby. It's changed. Oh, yeah. And, and I think that's one of the things and I talked to, you know, I talked to Ishmael when I had him on my podcast too. It's like, that's one of the things that I want to be part of, right? Like making the trade sexy again. And that's kind of, you know, what my event's about and just kind of a lot of stuff that we do the, you know, obviously going out, talking about what we do, showing it to other people and just making the place they want to be. Cause like I said, I, I remember being 22 years old and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. Right. I, I thought I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I uh, worked all these odd jobs and all of a sudden I just happened to stumble into service champions and, and answer a Craigslist ad. And next thing I know, I'm making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year selling air conditioning when I didn't even know what the fuck HVAC stood for. And the, the amount of money that you can make and the way that the trades have changed my life. I mean, I've only been doing this seven and a half years ago. I didn't know what HVAC stood for. And now I'm over here, you know, doing where I'm at now. And it's just like, it's crazy to even think that's even possible. And the funny thing is now I'm employing my friends that went to college. Like my friends that went to college are working in my office for me or working, you know, doing things for me now that I would have never in a million fucking years would have thought I was going to be their boss. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And you know what? I always had big goals. I showed my dad my breakdown of Valpac and my dad used to own a transmission shop, but, but the IRS took it away. Um, and he's like, you can't market like that and not expect to be the biggest company. And Valpac did it, you know, I still do it, but it, you know, I, I had to, what changed, I got very, very lucky. Right place, right time. The yellow book went away. All the double trucks, the guys that have been around, boom, that went to shit in 2008. So they all got out and now fair playing field. The best, the best, the strong survive. I was able to get more online reviews, get better videos, be able to recruit better. And these guys are like going, they can't stand a chance because they're like, what is Google? You know, they're like, yeah. why don't I just... Give the, why don't I just partner with you? Because you understand the marketing and recruiting. You can still get vehicles. You understand. I give my guys $3,500 worth of tools. And I'm not bragging about what I do. I'm like, here's the thing. People are like, I can't. I don't have the money like you have. And I go, I always say the same thing. Can you go to Costco or Sam's Club and pick up a little container of Bisquick and make freaking pancakes for your guys? Can you bring them out and play Frisbee or volleyball? One thing I'll tell you, Victor, I had a gal on my podcast. Her name's Barbara. She said the number one thing she figured out in a company if it stays together and people don't quit is they have best friends at their business where do you make best friends not in the truck calling each other you do it outside of work so you do these events you get the wives and the husbands and the kids together they make friends and you do these as much as possible now you could do some facebook lives and get a video guy and kill two birds with one stone but really you're hoping that they love each other and form a bond through your company and then everybody wins and there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing evil about this because they don't want to leave. Cause they go, listen, this is where we built a family. This is what we, we know this. We trust this. We love this. We're making money. I hired a dream manager full time her job. Kelly's full time job is to help people come up with their dreams. Is it taking your wife to Hawaii for your 10 year anniversary and giving her a ring? Cause you couldn't afford one. Whatever it is, our job is to help people think bigger. It's to help them dream again, because God knows a lot of us stopped dreaming a long time ago. I didn't, <laughs> but, but that's, that's the plan is to make lives better and enrich our employees lives, change an industry. And more importantly, I think we're going to make a lot, a lot, a lot of millionaires. And that's, and that's, and that's fucking a legacy, right? The main thing for you, it seems like at this point is legacy. Obviously the money's great, but the, you know, the, what you leave behind and how many people you help is something that does, that does matter along the way. But I, when you circle back, I was, I remember being at service champions. That was one of the reasons why I had a hard time leaving. Right. And the same, the reason you said is because I had built my community there, right? Those are my people. And I already knew that when you left that environment, they made it to where it was like, you became a leper almost. So like, if you left, you weren't, you weren't hanging out with Like you lost a lot of your friends. You lost a lot of your, your, your personality and who you hung out with every day. So I remember when I first left there, man, I was like, I was just thinking like, I just got to go back. I got to go back. And, you know, you know, I'm glad I did it now, but I still remember the way it made me feel because the same way you're talking is service champions brought everybody together. We always had different events. We we're going, we we're going to Cabo. We we're going to Vegas. We we're doing all these things that I didn't think anything of, but the way that Leland had mapped it out was to create that environment. So 
we got the environment, but I think one of the big things that you do also is, is the social media stuff. So can you kind of talk about how important your personal brand has been to not only growing your business? Cause I feel like when the, you have an owner, like even for myself, right now that I post so many, so much stuff on social media, I do all these things. I start getting people just want to come work for me. They want to be a part of whatever the fuck I'm doing. They're like, I don't know what you're doing, but I want to be part of it. Have you, have you noticed that drastically since you kind of started pushing really big on social media the last couple of years? It's been instrumental. And I'll tell you one of the things, my biggest thing I'm working on, and it's, it's such a overwhelmingly large project is training everybody in the company, how to do a B and I meeting, how to post on social media, how to grow a following because People are like, why would you want to do that with your employees? Yeah, and I'm like, here's my plan. The biggest project I'm working on now is how do we train employees how to be ambassadors, get their families involved, posting on social media? Because we're going after two things. We're going after recruiting amazing people, and we're going after recruiting amazing clients. So if they get paid and they can follow the sequence and they know they're going to make money, I'm like, I will have some of you guys next year making an extra seventy to $100,000 a year. And people are like, well, you're teaching them how to do a business. And I'm like, look, if somebody wants to leave my business, I had a, I had a big bank come in. And they're like, what if you train these people? You teach them all your stuff and they leave. I go, I hope they're successful. I hope I sa they said, hey, I met Tommy Mello. I met the family at A1 Garage Door Service. And they increased my life. They taught me how to be more confident in myself. They taught me about what life's all about. They taught me to dream again. And if they want to leave, it's not easy. We've designed this in a way that you can make just as much money as you want as a business owner, but just staying in for us. And my dream has to be big enough to fit all of theirs inside of it so they could do whatever the hell they want, when they want, with who they want. And that's important to me because, you know, we could get on here and talk on podcasts all day long and tell everybody, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. But if you're not really doing it, and you're just out for the money. Um, there's no doubt money. You know, you know what money allows me to do is a lot, exactly. money allows me to help a lot of people. And I've always loved the idea of me being in philanthropy rather than running it through the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. who are getting filthy rich. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty disciplined with money. Um, I lived at my apartment till about six months ago, <laughs> um, a 1100 square foot apartment. I drive a Nissan Titan. I don't have a Porsche or a Lambo or a brand new Corvette. Um, I, I, you know, I have some nice things, but I don't own anything that's appreciated. I don't have a boat. I don't have a motorcycle. I don't have a jet ski. I don't have any of that stuff. I never have. I don't have an RV or a Razor. And I'm not saying anybody that does is wrong. But for some reason, reason, Victor, a lot of people get together, husband and wife and family, and they go, we deserve all this. Yeah. Instead of just putting it back into the business, go rent a Harley for a week. Go on your buddy's boat. Like, that's what I don't understand. And they're like, it's this impulse buys and it's financing that they get sucked into it. And they wonder why they can't get ahead. And they go, we don't understand. And I'm like, well, let's see. You got two houses, which is fine, but you're not renting the other one out. You, you've got every, and they're like, we deserve this. I'm like, that's fine. But you, if that's your prerogative to have a bunch of toys and guns and go shooting every weekend, you're never going to grow the business. You know, that's what I think people respect is I'm here every day. I'm here on Saturday, Sunday. I was here all day for the hiring event. Then I came back here for two hours to meet the company from Florida. I care. I'm here and I'm investing back into the people and the business. And I think that's, that's one of the things that's allowed my business to grow tremendously as well. So since beginning, since day one, I never, I never, I don't have fancy cars. I don't have fancy shit. Uh, you guys will see me post like a, a post as Lamborghini the other day. One of my employees owns a Lamborghini. Okay. So I post this stuff and everybody's like, Oh, you got a Lamborghini. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm a cheap ass. Like I, I try to invest everything back in the business. I'm trying to grow something special. Like I'm 33. I got nowhere else to go. Right. Like, what am I going to do? Go, go blow all my money. Now I'm like, I plan by the time I'm 40, I'll probably start having some fun and start maybe buying some nice things, but I've yeah, I think, you got it. I think you can certain times for sure. I'm not going to say I'm never going to do anything nice, but it's just right now my main focus is one thing and and, I'm, and obviously like last year i was my focus is all over the place and i when i've really narrowed it down i focused like what do i want to do 
I want to grow the biggest home service company in the state of California, period. And that's going to happen over the next probably 36 to 48 months. I'm going to pass everybody just because I'm dedicating everything. All I do all day is like when I come in, all I'm doing is training, recruiting. Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm just giving out cards. I'm trying to bring in new people. I'm trying to acquire companies. And I changed my mindset to that where before it was like I was trying to do anything besides for being my business. I was trying to go do all this and that. I didn't want anything to do with being in the heating and airspace. And when I changed my mindset back to, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it and why we're going to do it. I've watched my entire staff change, right? Because I kind of, you know, when I when you're separated, like, you, yeah, your, your guys are going to run the business, but they're never going to be as excited, as motivated as you being there every single day, day in and day out. So I've dedicated now Monday through Friday, no matter what, I'm in the office from minimum 7 a.m. till probably about you know six o'clock at night. On the weekends, I'm on my phone, I'm texting the guys, I'm doing things all day. So seven days a week, I'm back in the business. And since that's happened in about March, it literally has gone like this. Like it's been night and day difference. Our our profit, our, our uh, EBITDA has just gone from, we were doing about 10% a month EBITDA to where we're 20, 30% EBITDA on some of these months now because all I'm doing is focusing on that. All I'm focusing is every day I'm loving on the guys. I'm training, I'm texting them. How are you doing? How's family? Do you need some time off? Do you need this? And I feel like I've become a servant rather than before I was like, I was the boss and I get to do whatever I want. Now I feel like I'm starting to just serve my employees and I've seen just a drastic change. Have you kind of noticed that, you know, a lot of the respect when you are there every day? Well, that's what people talk about all the time. I'll tell you this. It, it, the fact is that you're here, but these employees, they're my coworkers, number one. Number two is they have lives. When you when they walk in this office for their first day and you just say, hey, congratulations. Glad you're on board. My name's Tommy. You're going to be riding with this guy. Here's some stuff to, to study. Good luck. What if you said, hey, listen, man, I planned this haul out for you. I got the next two weeks. Here's what it looks like. Let me take you to breakfast. You know, I don't have time to go with every employee. Don't get me wrong. But have to, if I had 10 employees, I'd be doing so much more. Uh, and, you know, the fact is I do a four hour orientation with every single technician four hours, but they're, they're all together. I get to answer questions. I give them my cell phone. And my thing is, is, is if you really think about this, they came on trusting you and your vision and they have a life. They have goals just like you have. They have a lot of them have big families and to sit there and say, I'm the boss. You work for me. You do what I say. I own the business. We'll get you nowhere. And this is a world where now employees have choices. And that's what everybody's oh, yeah. got to understand that's listening to this. If you think that because you will start a business that everybody's supposed to go to your beck and call, oh, well, they'll never work as hard as me. If they worked as hard as you, they'd be your boss. So don't expect yeah. people to work as hard as you for your goals. I think it's just twisted what owners think in their heads. And they, a lot of these guys that own businesses, they don't own businesses. They're like I used to be. They own a job. They leave their business for two weeks. It collapses. So – how much is your business worth if you're everything? I'll tell you what I'll give you for it. I'll give you, I will literally, if you got a $500,000 business and when you leave, it's done, I'll give you 200 grand for your business if that's what you're bringing in the year. I, I, your business, well, I've had clients for 30 years. Good. I'm not going to pay you with what I could do to your business. I've got other people to invest in. I got employees that I want to invest in. I want people I want to grow into the business higher up and put them. We, we go through leadership training. We did this awesome leadership training in Flagstaff three weeks ago. I just I just think it's crazy what people think. You are you work for me. You should listen to me. And they're, they're cracking the whip all the time. I see you all the time. You're the carrot guy. Not, not the software, but you are giving out a carrot all the time. You're praising them. You're loving them. And they're going to stay loyal. They're not going to quit. They're going to recruit. They're not going to call in sick. They're going to be there on the weekends. They're going to – that's what happens. So I had, a, I had a competitor of mine the other day, and, you know, I've never actually met the guy. He's, he's, his name's uh, Keith Flores. So he's got an AC company in my market. One of my guys was, I don't know where my guy was, but Keith walks up to him doing what as an owner should do, trying to recruit, right? He walks up and he tries to recruit my guy. And, and I get a message from Keith on, on social media. You know, I've never really been friends with a guy or whatever, but we're friends on social media. He messages me. He's like, I've been doing this for fucking 15 years. And everybody I've ever recruited, there's always that conversation of like, I might be able to get him. He's like, I've never had any employee just say, oh, hell no, I'll never leave. Victor's the best boss I've ever fucking had. No quite like, he's like, that guy, I've never seen anybody have so much respect. And I said, like, because that's how I treat my guys. I reach out to them. I don't wait for them, something to happen or something bad to happen or yell to them. I reach out, hey, how's your family? How are you doing? What's going on, man? Are you happy with everything? 
And once I started doing that, rather than reactive and the only time they ever heard from me was when they're in trouble, uh, it's changed the way the business is. Like these guys fucking, well, they'll go, they'll go fight for me. If someone talks shit, they'll go fight them right there in the street. And that's the kind of culture that we've built. And that's the only way you can build that is by actually giving a shit about your employees and, and caring what's going on in their life, right? Well, well, there's something interesting that I wanted to say here. A top producer will definitely hurt a company. I don't care how big you are. But here's what you can't expect. If anybody took, <laughs> here's something interesting. And I'm not anything like the size of Ford or Chrysler or anything. But can you imagine seeing a guy that works at Ford if you're Chrysler? And you go to him and you're like, once I take this employee that's on the assembly line or whatever, I'm going to become like Ford. There are so many things that have to go right for a job to be successful from our price book to the way we market to the way there's so many things. And of course, the top producers are hard to come by. If you offer them more money, more money means this. You know what yeah. they like? Acknowledgement. They get all the benefits in the world, the friendships, the fact that we have meetings twice a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and an hour long meeting on Thursdays. The fact that I answered my phone last night at 7 p.m. when a guy closed a $30,000 door sale, and I said, you are the freaking man, dude, the guy in Portland. And I said, Nathaniel, I'm like, this is freaking amazing. Can you make a two-minute video? I want to share it with all the guys on your success. I do tell them, though, if you've got anything to bitch about, here's the three guys you call, don't call me. Because I literally get it in my head. I get depressed. I'm not real depression, yeah. but I'm like, I don't want to hear negativity. You call these guys. That's their job. If, I, if you say something great, I get motivated. I call more people. I share it. And I'm like, give me the good. Give me the good whatever you can because I'm like, dude, I, I'm i like this all the time. You know that. Like, this is not yeah. like energy, Tommy. This is I got fast and I got real fast and I got crazy fast. Those are my three speeds. And I'm constantly motivated and excited. I don't know any other way to just let's, – let's, if I have a bad fever or a cold, people are like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's going on? What's wrong with you? I'm like, I just don't feel good today. They're like, oh, dude, snap out of it. We need your, we need that energy. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I can't have this 365, but it's here about 360. So when you are talking about having, you know, obviously having employees, so many people have this issue with how the fuck do I find employees? And I, I had a, I had a conversation on the podcast the other day or a couple, I think two episodes ago. And I was talking about, would anybody, I always tell people, like when I talk to them, like, would you want to go work at your company? What about your company would make someone fucking excited or quit their job to go work there? Do you have better benefits? Do you have better pay? Do you have better anything? And, and a lot of these guys, they don't really think of their, their company from an uh, employee point of view. Like, so I know obviously for you, recruiting is probably easy because you're providing all those things. Imagine what would be the one thing that you want to say to a company that's thinking about, Hey, I want to start growing. How do I start attracting high level talent? All right, there's a book right here on my shelf. There's a million books, but this is called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. He writes in the book when he was looking for the perfect wife, right? So he wrote down, he grabbed a piece of paper and wrote down everything he wanted. I mean, he wrote down everything he hated about his ex-girlfriends, what she looked like, what she smelled like, what her hobbies were. And he writes down a hundred things. And he looks at his list and he goes, I can't even come close to getting a chick like this. I am not the right guy to pull this kind of woman. So he wrote down on the back a hundred things that he would have to become to get a woman that he wanted. And he had to morph himself into this new human being that would attract and become a great father and be a great listener, a great communicator and be attentive and be, have empathy and just not. So then all of a sudden it made sense to me. Let me write down a list, and I couldn't come up with 100, but who would I need to become as an employer to find somebody that's amazing that would choose me out of all the choices they have? Who would come here for me and my dream and my vision and want to come with this fun ride? So I started saying, it'd be somebody that wants to break bread and somebody that wants to invite somebody and somebody that's keeping track and somebody that's going to invest in the Dave Ramsey and a dream manager and all these things. And sometimes people think I'm crazy. Some of my like CFO, they're like, why do you invest in all this crazy, stupid, like Dave Ramsey makes sense, but the dream manager, they're wondering. And I'm like, because, and I want more of it. And I got a guy that comes talks about credit cards and how to buy houses. And, and those things mean a lot to me. I had Darius Livers on a live the other day for all my people to talk about how he sells promotions, which is financing. And I tried to bring, I asked you to come on to talk and you were busy that day, but I wanted you to talk about tune-ups. And, you know, I know you had Brent Buckley at your, at your last show. So these are the things 
I needed to become who I would work for. And that's what you need to tell these people that are listening, uh, these business owners is, why would I work for you? Come up with a list of what you'd want to work for. And it's not somebody that's miserable, that's doing pips and, hey, you're having a shitty day. I'm going to mark you off the schedule. Hey, man, what's going on today? Well, my son's sick. My wife's, you know, having a really bad time at work. Wow. Talk to me about that. Why, yeah. why just shit on somebody every time they're having a bad day? You know, it doesn't make sense. Everything, it, it, when we, Simon Sinek was speaking at Pantheon and he said, he said, you know, when, when I'm, when I'm at a Four Seasons hotel, the people there, when they say, hello, how are you? I believe them. I believe that they're genuinely asking me how I am. And I believe they're actually listening when I talk to them because of the caliber of people that attracts the four seasons, they make a great living, but they treat their employees amazing. And, yeah. and it's these little things of how you treat people, the things you say, the words, the tonality. And that's what I think I would tell. That's a long winded answer. I know it lasted a few minutes, but it's so important. No, hundred percent, man. Well, obviously you got this great business. You got all these things going on. Obviously, you know, you're a big influencer to a lot of people in the home service space and me included, obviously following, just kind of following from the, from the background, I guess. So now I see that you got a, an event coming up. It looks like in October. Do you want to kind of talk about your event and you know, who you're expecting to be there and things that they could benefit from it? Yeah. So basically what I started was I said, listen, we got to have an event. People are asking me for shop tours all the time. I'm like, let's just do a shop tour and we'll have, we'll show everybody. I said, F it. We're going to open up. We're going to show them our service time. We're going to do shop tours. I'm going to show them the new training center. We got fake dogs in there, Tar and Max. You got to play with the dogs. We teach people eye contact and tonality. We, t- we got scripting. We role play. We role play. We role play. Then we role play more. And I said, everybody wants to see this in motion. I got like, I got, I was doing 10 tours a week. And I'm like, can we just have a show to just invite everybody in? And they're like, well, who do you want to bring in? I'm like, everybody. They want to see it, let them come. So the first time we called it vertical track because the garage door is vertical. You're on track to go vertical and it's a garage door playoff. And so we had 100 people the first time. We had 300 the last time. And the coolest thing about what I'm doing is um, the event's never profitable. We've never made much. The the, the two times we did it, we we were in the, 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 the net loss. But what I love is these messages and these emails and these Facebooks and these people that call me on the phone, they're like, the success that's come out of it. And I don't even need to promote it very much. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as good of a promoter of event as you. Like, I, like you, you've got people there that want to go to see some people. And I got to tell you, I have amazing people. I, the, the people are just, you can't imagine the caliber of people. But for me, I'm just, I'm thinking – Man, this is what it's all about. When it, when the show comes and people go, this is unlike anything. I've had vendors there and they say, we want to triple down. We want this, like, like for example, power selling pros. They're like, like we've never had an event. We want to, we want to piggyback on yours and invite all of our people to have a VIP. Uh, you know, stuff like that means a lot to me because I've been working with them <laughs> for 10 years. I helped bring them come up, you know, and he helped me come up. So I've got these relationships that I've worked with forever. And these are the people that I, I, it's a, it's a give, give situation. What's in it for, what's in it for them and how do they get the reward out of it too? And so, so we're going to do a big shop tour. We, we're going to be at the casino there at the I-10. It's right by the airport. We got really cheap rooms. Um, and that's what it's about. I got, I got a guy like Michael Burnoff uh, coming and he's just a genius. I, I just, it's all deliver value. And the cool thing is that I basically made a Rolodex of everybody we use. And kind of like next year, we get a rebate on everything. So if they become part of Home Service Freedom, they get access to these prices that you can't get access to because you, you don't have 400 technicians. So yeah. the, the fact that we're not there yet, but with a couple of these acquisitions. So I'm using my buy rates to get them my pricing and then getting them a rebate on top of it. So like, Ken Goodrich, he's a part of Nexter, but he's like, dude, I, I don't really log in. He's like, I just, I get a check that's more yeah. than what I spend. I get, I get a check back from Nexter that's more than I spend because I can't get these prices just get all, you know? So, so that's kind of what we've been trying to do with that. And, um, and that, that, you know, you know like I said, it's, it's a week before years. 
I mean, yours is absolutely phenomenal in Vegas. If you can make it to the third day to your, it's it's tough in Vegas. Mine is a little bit different because you don't have the casinos and the alcohol, uh, yeah. but it is at a casino. But anyway, um, yeah. And what's what are the dates on your event? 12th, 13th, 14th. And we're doing 12, something 13th. a little different. We're, we're doing tech training. So I'm actually, we trained about 30 techs last time. And, and literally I got a phone call from a buddy and he's like, dude, our ticket average went from 420, which is still not bad, to like 900 because they learned what a they learned what a turnover was and they learned how to sell. No one sells doors in this industry. They like hate selling doors. But I said, would you really fix this old piece of shit if it was your mom's, or would you give her something nice? You know. So, so that's what we're doing. Is we're, we got the uh, event coming up, and then we're doing some CSR dispatch training because no one understands, Victor. If you book 60% versus 90%, you take 20 calls a day with a $500 ticket average, 300 days a year, you make a million dollars more for your company. One CSR going from 60 to 90%. And these That's little true. things matter. And I'll tell you what, it's... it's they, one, of the it, things, one of the things, like what Tommy just said, you guys are not... Re if you haven't listened, right? Like your call, your call center is one of your number one... That is just to be one of your number one focus you have in a home service business. If you're struggling right now, go work on your call center. So, you know, that's one of the things that I worked on over the last 12 months is I was spending all this money on marketing, but my booking rate, you know, I wasn't really watching it and started paying attention to it and paying attention. I'm like, dude, I'm spending all this fucking money. Why isn't it spitting out coins? Right. And when I started put, putting focus on my call center and how we answer phones, uh, what we say on the phones, how we book them, why we book them, even like down to like, I always get the information now before we even tell them that we might be booked out a couple days, but I won't tell them that until I get the information because I want to be able to retarget all those customers. I still want to get their email, their phone number, their address, all that stuff. So a lot of the stuff that comes down to success in a business is that call center. So if you guys are planning, hey, you guys are really struggling. You guys want to figure out a better way. October 12th and 13th in Arizona. It's in Arizona, correct? Yeah, 15 minutes from the airport. The hotels are, we got a stupid low rate. It's the perfect time of year to come to Phoenix. And like I said, for me, I had Ara pop in on the last one. I, I tried to get Jonathan Wisman. He wrote the sales boss. He came, Michael McCallowitz came to the last one. You know, I'm looking, trying to get some big names. You know how this stuff goes. You're, you're, you're really, your show is just, it, 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 you go all out and that's not it, it's me i'm like i'm 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 going for change i'm trying to get them to walk away with three key things that'll double their business in the next 90 days and the deal is for me it's about networking and man I, i'll tell you nothing's been better for me than having an event my podcast is about equal to it because i love my podcast i love doing what you're doing now so you know, it's, yeah, I mean, and a lot of people don't realize the the importance of just getting in front of people that are high level, right? So when you're coming to the events, the the conversation on the stage is important, right? Listen to it, take notes, but getting around someone like a Tommy, right? That just the energy that Tommy Tommy exudes, and some of these other people just being around the high level people, it'll start getting you to think different, right? So when people come around me, they're like, "God damn, dude! Like you are just nonstop thinking of stuff." I'm like, "Yeah, this is how what people got to be doing. It's how you got to communicate. It's how you talk. How you carry yourself." And when you're around Tommy, it just starts changing the way you think. So, I mean, if you guys are thinking about, you know, coming, obviously, if you're coming to my event, um, you know, obviously, I can't wait to see you guys. But you guys should, you know, it's October. HVAC guys, even though he's in a different service, say, a different service, his event's going to be obviously something that's going to benefit you guys as well. Uh, if you guys are going to Tommy's event, you guys, if you guys want to go to both events, let me know. I'll actually give you 500 bucks off of my event. If you pay full price for Tommy's, I'll give you 500 bucks off of my event. If you want to uh, join his. As yeah. Well. Let's talk about this, Victor, because I think there's a lot of people that would benefit from both. I mean, listen, we got a lot of the same venues most of the time, a lot of the same type people speaking. My, my big thing is look, there's a lot of people that go to all these events and they, they wait for the note fairy to come grant all their wishes. Right. They wait. They're like, oh, my God, I can't wait to go back home. And then life fucking punches you in the throat when you get back. And you're like, dude, I took a few days off to go have a good trip. And then all of a sudden those notes go somewhere to die. Yeah. And this is the one thing that we talk about is failure to implement. And when you walk away, I want complete accountability. I want to know that you're making a change. I want more time for you with your family, more time to do what you want to do, what you want, when you want, with who you want. I'm thinking about naming that my new book, What You Want, When You Want, With Who You Want, because that's what I've always wanted to build. People say, when is enough enough? I say, it's not. It's it's never, it's not this fictionary number. It's to leave a legacy. 
And it's to do, yeah. I tell people I'm like Peter Parker. I'm nothing like Spider-Man, but his his uncle said, with great power comes great responsibility. You have a you have a, a responsibility to go as far as you can. And I'm not, there's no limit to my growth. I'm just writing the first chapter right now of my book of life. I don't have an end chapter in mind except for it's eight feet under, 10 feet under, whatever. But I, I'm not stopping. Imagine me at a beach for three weeks just doing nothing. I'd be No. Well, you know, I read... I read uh, Ed Milet's book, uh, Max Out. I don't know if you've ever if you read it. Yeah, no, I have, but I haven't read it yet. You buy it for fucking five bucks and listen to the audio book, and it changed the way I started thinking. Like, you want he, – he asked in the book, when you get to the end of your life and you go meet yourself at the end of your life, do you want to say that you weren't, you weren't the man that you could have been, right? Or if you go meet the man you could have been and you're not that, is that really what you want? And it's all about maxing out every day, every opportunity. And, and since I've read that book – I've, I quit drinking. I've changed my entire personality. I work out every day. I'm, I'm trying to be the best version of myself. And, and I think that's, you know, something that's changed my mindset is like, dude, I, when I'm done with this, I don't want to have a fucking, what if, what if I would have done this? I'm going to grab this motherfucker by the balls and I'm going to be one of the most successful people to ever do it. Because if I don't do it, I'm never going to be able to live with myself. And I think that's what's kind of changed my mindset with the second I read that book. I've read it three times since. And every time I go through it, I start thinking of different things that I can, what I can benefit my life and things that I could get me moving forward and just gets me excited, man. Like now I'm just so fucking excited to wake up. I just think I'm like, dude, there's so much more big shit I can do. And, and I'm, and everywhere, like every entrepreneur, you probably drive down by things. I drive by buildings all the time. Right. And I drive by buildings and I'm like, if I own that, it'd be successful. If I own that, it'd be successful. Right. You ever get that when you got, when you go by places like, Oh, I could turn that around if they gave me an opportunity. If I go into a fucking restaurant, dude, that restaurant would be ran so much fucking better if I was there. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I know how much time I have in the day and I see what's my best time. And here's the thing with me is, is, you know, the seven habits of highly successful people and the morning miracle and, and it's the 5 a.m. club, and you got to get up earlier. You should never drink. You know, there's certain people that drink every single night, or they gamble all the time, or they smoke eight blunts a day. I would say this. <laughs> Everything oh, is oh, yeah, good. Sure. My, you, you know, you, you, for me to say, you know, you are going to work seven days a week, and you are going to conquer because you own everything. You know, there's a great book by Dan Thurman called Off Balance on Purpose. And there's no way that you could be perfectly praying 10 times a day with the Lord you could be meditating for yourself and doing yoga. You could be working out physical fitness, perfect diet, working and getting raises every single day, as well as spending perfect every day with family and going to every birthday on time. You just can't do it. So you're off balance on purpose and you want to have bigger times of your life with things, right? So yeah. I'm honest with myself and I don't give myself – because if I tell myself, you are going to eat chicken and rice every fucking night. You are going to be – Everything you will pray for a half an hour. You will not consume alcohol. You will stay away. It's like, look, there's things I need to work on, but also I'm not like, you will be yeah. a zombie. You are forced to be the best you can be. You know, I'm not, you know, yeah. it just to me, I, I want, I want what, what the, what's the fun if you can't enjoy it, you know? No, that's true. And, and I, I believe, you know, I believe in the same thing. I think just for me, you know, for me, it's just like, okay, what's, what's important for me now? You know, obviously with the kids and the business, I just, you know, obviously it might, it might change next year. It might change next month. Who knows? It's like, you got to play it by ear. I always tell people I live like life in like seasons, right? Like this season, I got to be like this. Cause I know I need to do this right now. And if I focus on this now then I can kind of focus on what I want to focus on later. So I think that's been kind of for me right now, like in this season right now, this is who I need to be. This is what it's I need to focus on. And you're on. turning things around and you're having a time of your life. And guess what? I'm not trying to convince anybody to do anything they don't want to do. Get in the best shape of your life. You owe it to yourself to live long. And alcohol doesn't help, and, and a lot of these things don't help. And it, a lot, there's a lot of stuff, but you know what you need to do. Everybody yeah. listening to this, I don't need to tell you how to get in shape. You drink more water, you drink less, you smoke less, you get enough sleep, <laughs> and you watch your calories. So, that, look, you, you know what's so funny is I, I go on these podcasts and I tell everybody everything on my mind, and I'll, I'll pour my secrets of A1. Anything I've learned, I'll, you ask me, I'll tell you. And what's crazy is my managers go, what the fuck, you know, what are you thinking, dude? Like you're giving away all of our secrets. And I go, let me ask you one thing. Do you think if I texted Victor right now, uh, me at the driving range, let's say perhaps I got lucky and hit the ball 300 yards straight with a driver. And I said, here's how you hit the ball, Victor. Just go ahead and hit the, the golf ball 300 yards. Good luck. Okay. You yeah. need to do, you need to hit golf balls a thousand a day for a year to come close to doing that. And it just, because I tell somebody, here's how we do it. Doesn't mean, not only is it very difficult, you got to have the infrastructure, the delegation, the org charts, the depth charts. You got to have all these things. And and what I've learned is just being honest with people and tell, pouring my heart out and giving everything I have to their success. 
And it's a lot easier when you can handhold people like Al did for me. We, we, we invested in Al and he invested in us and he hold, held our hand through the whole process. But don't don't ever think you're giving away secrets because that's the biggest mistake anybody could ever say is, oh, man, they just gave away their secret sauce. Dude, I, I've read so many books. There's really no secrets. It's just start today and get started, you know? Yeah, and I, and I get that all the time. It's like even with my sales training and all this stuff. And I'm just like, dude, I don't care because I already know that most people aren't going to implement it. And it's one of the things is like with coaching, right? People always come back for the same thing over and over. You can tell them that 10 times they're still going to come back 10 more times. A lot of guys that come to my training, I'm like, dude, you've already been to the same training. Why are you coming back again? It's because it's the implementation part is the hard part. Well, I so, say the same thing. I say the same thing every morning. Literally, it's a different way. And Adam goes to me, why do you say the same damn things just a different way? Why do you talk about conversion rate? Why do you talk about eye contact? And when the same, like, don't you have anything new? And I go, Adam, all I'm trying to do is get one person today. If I get one person to listen, I got a captive audience. All Because somebody tells me, man, I listen to your same shit for five months every day. And then finally it clicked. And that day I was set free. That day I got to decide what I wanted to make in life. And that's what people don't understand is I beat the same drum, the same four or five things every day, all day. And they're like, if you complicate it too much, it's it's like it's hard to get done. I told I told my guys not that long ago six months ago, I said, you got to go out there and recruit. And then I realized who taught them how to recruit. It's not the same as my eight step sales process in the garage. Uh, it's, it's way different. So I had to create a process and show them and train them and role play it and practice, 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 and prove to me that you could do it in practice. You know, I, I saw um, Larry Fitzgerald and he goes, you guys see me make some badass catches, right? You saw me, I was on the Cardinals. I was the MVP. You, I made 10 times better catches in practice to get up to that day. I did so good at practice. And what Kurt Warner told Fitzgerald is he goes, I can't trust you one day. And Fitzgerald said, what do you mean? Because he was a natural talent. He could catch the ball. He goes, I told you to run this play 10 yards, book left, book back right. You went 12 yards. And he goes, so I made the play work. He goes, I'm not going to throw the ball to you. Because if you don't run this exact play like we talked about, to the and, and Larry goes, it was the most amazing thing because he learned he learned to run ten yards out, book and book back. And when he did that, he became an MVP. He became the best of himself. But he had to be trustworthy. He had to play the play exactly like they practiced over and over. And I think it's so important because we talk about role play, but I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, the people that are listening are not doing role play. You walk over yeah. to my office, possibly right now, my training center. They're, they're probably went home. But chances are, if you walk in at a random time, they're role-playing. That's fucking awesome, man. Well, Tommy, obviously me and you could probably talk all day about this. I get pumped up, man. Sorry. And, you, and you I, and I, me. I, I get excited my, myself, man. And, I, and actually, I'm, I'm probably going to probably make a trip out to your event, too. So you said it's October 12th and 13th in Arizona. Yeah, man. Listen, be, you, you, listen. give me a buzz. Let's set it all up. I'm going to have to come check it out. So if yeah, you guys, I are, if you guys are in if you guys are interested, get out to Tommy's event October twentieth or twelfth through thirteenth. My event October twentieth through twenty or so twentieth through the twenty second, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tommy's going to be speaking there. Last year, everybody loved what Tommy had to say on the stage and motivated everybody. And he's just one of you know many speakers that are going to be there. From you know Joe, you got Montana. a hell of a lineup, man. Dude, it's you know if I make a penny on this, I'll be happy. I'll probably be down a couple hundred grand. And I dropped, I think I'm at like one point two million or something like that on it now. Uh, but the event's going to be badass. The speakers on the stage are going to be badass. We're expecting about a thousand people. Uh, the after parties are going to be insane. Thank you to all the sponsors that have stepped up and helped me. You know, obviously last year I ran into like a couple, I only had like four sponsors last year. I didn't know what I was doing this year. The event's going to be fucking off the chain. So if you guys can make it out, make it out to Tommy's on October 12th to 13th, then follow up the next weekend. If you guys come use promo code mellow and I'll give you $500 off. As long as you went to Tommy's event the week before, I'll get you 500 bucks off my event. Hope to see you guys there. Tommy, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks for joining me on. Uh, I'm excited to see what you do over the next couple of years. And, you know, I'll, I'll be watching from the background, uh, building myself, man. I, like I said, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. So thank you so much for coming on. Victor, Victor Raincore, brother. I appreciate you, man. Y you and Ishmael, young guys, grabbing the bull by the horns, taking over an industry. It's amazing. So you owe yourself a round of applause. And uh, then we'll work something out. I'd love to get... You know, verticaltrack.com is ours. And if 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 you want to go to both and you just want to make a vacation out of it, I'll make it worth your while. I don't have any discount codes or anything. Just text me or Facebook me and I'll I'll get you a ticket to our stuff because at the end of the day, I, I got a lot out of your event.
and I think you'll dig it when you come to mine. I'd love to get you out there as well. I, I got to figure this stuff out. Like one thing that I don't do is I'm not sitting here. I'm not the micro guy, right? Yeah. You, you know, for a fact, there's, there's AV teams, there's food, there's all kinds of shit and after part. Um, yeah, that's... I, I know this much about the event, except I know what were the value. I know that I'm going to change lives. And I know this, if you walk out and you get to spend an extra two hours with your kids a week, that would be the best investment that you've ever made in your life. So I appreciate you, Victor. This was great. You got me pumped up. I'm going to go out there today and just, I'm going to go home and make some um, videos of uh, recognition to some of my staff, but thank you for letting me do this. Thank you, Tommy. Have a good night, man. Like I said, we'll see you in October, brother. Later. All right, my man. Thank you.